Hey folks, today we're talking about Google SGE, that search generative experience. And it was just announced at Google I.O. And some people thought that search was going to be Google Bard, which is the chat GPT like competitor. But no, they're also having it embedded in search kind of like Bing has Bing chat. And so what are we going to do today with Google SGE? I got early access to it. I'm going to show you what it looks like, how you, how you work with it. And how it actually is different from Bing Chat, ChatGPT, Google Bard. So we're going to cover a lot of ground today, but I thought it was really interesting in order to give you this first look. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is take you to the Google search page. Now, this might look different than your Google search page, and that's not because of the way I have it customized. It's because this is the Chrome beta browser. Now, uh, you have to use Chrome beta in order to use this. Kind of like for Bing Chat, you have to use the Edge browser. Uh, so your regular Chrome browser won't work. And when you get accepted, you have to sign up for through Search Labs to get access to this Google SGE. And when you get accepted through the email, you have to go in. The first thing I'll tell you to do, if you don't already have it, is download the Chrome beta browser. Okay, so once you've done that, what you'll notice here in the upper right-hand corner is we have this little flask. And that means Search Labs is active and you presumably will be able to act access other types of Google early access solutions. All right, so the first thing we want to do is let's just go into uh, Google search and uh, we'll just type, what's the best time of year to visit Iceland? All right, so you can see down below, we started getting an answer box, right? That we would normally see. But above that, we have the generative AI is experimental, info quality may value, but it's the generative AI answer. And so this is supposed to be your conversational search. Uh, it tells you the best time to visit Iceland. You have some additional information here. One of the things you'll notice, which is quite a bit different than Bing Chat, if you've tried that, no sources, no source links inside of the response. Now, there are some sources over here to the right. You can scroll through. You can also do an expansion, and you can look at several different places. But it doesn't actually tell you which item in the response goes to which source. Uh, so that's something you'll have to figure out for yourself. Just to go down, you have your answer box that you might have uh, in other searches. People also ask, and then you have your normal 10 blue links uh, below the fold there. Okay, so that's one of the interesting things here. You might notice that there's no ads as well. So this is what happens when you have experimental solutions. I assume when this moves forward, you will have lots of ads uh, because that is the core business model after, after all. Okay, so you can see down below too, we've got some chips here. What's the best month to see the Northern Lights in, uh, in Iceland? So we can click that. It's gonna generate an answer as well. Uh, it's trying to prompt you to what are logical uh, follow-on questions here. Now, the other thing is we can ask a follow-up. And so let me let me grab one that I've been using here. And this is what are some interesting hikes in Iceland that are less than two hours? All right, so it's going to try to generate a response here as well. And here you go. It's given me a list of some different hikes that I can do. I can click through to those. I also have some sources here, about 10. So this is the you know, essentially a nice list of things that I could look at directly as opposed to just going through with Google search, which is going to give me the aggregated aggregated solutions uh, that all the different websites are going to be doing. Okay, so this is a good example of something that you might do if you're going to uh, go for a travel experience. Uh, but let's look at some different use cases. So I'm going to reset this. And this will take us to a new Google splash page, which gives you all these different ideas of things that you can search for in Google. But we're going to do our own here. Uh, so let's do something that's based on timeliness. Since this is search, you know, does it know something that just happened? And this is something that happened yesterday. Uh, so the question was, you know, who won Formula One in Monaco this week? And it gives me basically an answer box. This is not conversational at all, right? And uh, we'll ask a different question. How many wins for Red Bull this season? Oh, it's just bringing up stats again. See, it's not actually giving me this conversation. Um, you know, what made the difference? Uh, let's see, propelling Max to the win this week. Okay, so this would be a perfect type of 
answer for a generative answer to look at different news stories and it does it. So it shows that <laughs> it does it, but it doesn't do this week. It's this is two weeks ago, the Miami Grand Prix. So we did actually go back and look at some of the articles around uh, Formula One in Miami a couple of weeks ago. It sort of forgot that we were talking about Monaco, but it did try to aggregate them and give us this answer. We also have some different options and then the traditional Google search results. Okay, so this is fun to see. Uh, we'll reset this and let's try another type of request. Uh, let's go into video content. So I have a um, I have a request here. I can just paste in. What's the easiest way to add graphics to your YouTube video? Again, it's going to generate an answer here. And look, it gives me a list once again. So it's giving me these different types of options. It has, again, some links, you know, particularly to YouTube videos. And down below, it's going to give me lots more videos, right? Because it knows that I'm looking for something related to YouTube and it believes the videos are the best way to do this. So now let me ask a follow-up question. Um, what is the difference between the second and third option? So again, there was a list up above the second and third option. I think we're Pixar and or pick monkey and Canva. And so we'll go back up there, uh, Canva and pick monkey. And it's telling me, what they are, how they're different. And then we, we've got additional information down below. Okay, so this, is, this has been pretty interesting. Now let me, let me do a different request. And I'm gonna reset this again. So reset and go back and I'm gonna do something about BERT. If you don't know what BERT is, it is a really important development in large language models and, and natural language understanding. And uh, I'm just going to ask a question about BERT. Oh, interesting. So I asked a question about BERT, which was actually developed by, by Google. Uh, and it gives me a hugging face response. It gives me toward data science. These are actually really good sources that you might want to go and, and get the answer for to this too, but it does not try to do a generative result. And I thought this was particularly interesting. Now, if I then were to go to another example, let me swap this out. Let me show you what Google Bard gives you. So when we ask that question, it thinks for a couple of moments and it gives me a very long answer. You can see that there's some bullet points below. This is actually a, a pretty comprehensive answer. Now, it's at the top, it'll give you variants of that if you want them shorter, longer, different tone. Uh, you can also export it and you can share. You know, there's another sharing option over there behind me. Uh, and you can uh, do a Google search and we can do a follow up. But note, there are no links in Bard, it's not linking you to sources. All right, so we're going to do a quick follow up here. And does ChatGPT use BERT? And the answer is no, so that is correct. And we can ask a different question. And you'll see that it's going to answer. I want to demonstrate one more thing for you here. And this is about the uh, training data sets. And it gives us a nice little table there uh, in terms of the data sets. But then I can actually Google it, and it'll bring up additional data. And you can sort of go down and look at the the answers. You get the answer box, then you get a traditional Google search result page. Okay, so that's that's the BERT experience, and that's different from you know, what we've been experiencing with uh, Google search generative experience. So it's not really the same as search, but it's actually a richer experience. Like the generation is much different. Now, just like a, a, a quick aside, uh, when we talk about the different solutions, it appears that uh, uh, this version of Google BART is using Palm the large language model, as well as the, uh, as well as the Google search generative experience that might be replaced by the Gemini model, but those should be comparable experiences. Okay. So I want to do one other thing here. Now let's look at Bing. All right. So we're going to ask the same question on Bing. 
<clears throat> and this is going to take a moment because it always takes a moment for Bing to search, GPT-4, all the other things that uh, Microsoft is doing. And oh, and by the way, you have to scroll up. This thing drives me nuts from a user, gener user experience standpoint. I always have to scroll up in order to see the, uh, the response that it should. Now, one of the things that we have here is we have a citation and the citations are in line right away. You know, really simple way for you to see where the information uh, came from. Okay, so so that's the Bing experience, and and a little bit different. I, I think it's a little bit more robust than either of the uh, Bard or the search generative experience. And let's do a, a new uh, a new solution, which is Chat GPT. Now, Chat GPT, some of you know, has the now the browser model uh, that you can go. So you can, when you go in, if you have a Subscription, you can go into the GPT-4 and you can select the Bing search model and we'll ask the same question. Now, this again is going to take a long time because GPT-4, whether you're using Bing's, the Bing search model or the standard uh, response is going to be very verbose, but it, it actually is a very comprehensive solution. So what we have is we've got the first bullet point, the second bullet point, and one of the things that we're not seeing that we saw just a moment ago in Bing chat is we're not seeing citations. This would be the perfect type of example in Bing chat where after each of these bullets, it would give you one, two, or three citations, and then it would give you the citations at the bottom. And what you're going to see is when we go through this, so there's going to be, I think there's just five uh, responses in terms of how BERT impacted uh, large language model development. It's going to give you a nice summary at the end, and there will be no links. Zero links, which is interesting because I'm using Bing Chat and I would have expected there to, there to be a link. Okay. So what I can do though, is I can do a follow-up and let's do that timeliness type of question. And we'll talk about Formula One. This just happened yesterday in Monaco and we'll see who won. So it's thinking, and when you're using these different models in ChatGTP, you can actually click that little button. It'll tell you what's happening. It's thinking, it's looking at different sites in order to get the, the answer. And it says Max Verstappen won the 2023 Formula One Monaco Grand Prix. That is correct. And look, there's a little source link. It's so small, you might never even notice it, but we can go here and this is the source you might have. We can just come back from that. Uh, but this is obviously a, a very different experience from what you might see in uh, in Bing Chat, in Google Bard, and or Google Search Generative Experience. And so, you know, we go you know back to that reset. And what I recommend you do is is set is try this for yourself. You know, see what the different types of solutions are that that it comes back with with ideas. And the question I have for you is ultimately, will this change the way you search? Do you like it when you get these answers as opposed to, you know, scrolling down below and getting the, the blue links? Do you like it that you have these other, you know, rich graphic interface options up to the right as your options, not knowing exactly where the citations are like Bing chat. So it's a very different type of thing. One of the things I like about conversational search is that it gives you a lot more information than the blue links. Blue links just say, hey, I think I understand what you're interested in. And then it will give you blue links that hopefully best answer that, but you don't know which of the links is actually answers the best thing. Plus it'll surface things you might not have actually thought. Capybaras have been around for over th 3 million years. That might not be something that I find in the first couple of answers to search. So I get access to this additional information that leads to maybe a richer understanding of what you can, of what search can be. And it's almost like talking to an expert because they'll give you the answer. They might give you a little bit more context. And then you can do follow-up questions and learn more and more and more. So I hope you like this. Google search generative experience, Google SGE, sign up for it. What's the verdict? Well, it's early. And there's a little bit of confusion potentially between Google Bard and Google Search Gender of Experience. I see what they're doing. They're fine tuning the search experience, kind of like Bing Chat is to Google Search Gender of Experience. Google Bard is to Chat GPT. They feel like they need to have both. Uh, it seems to me that there's so much overlap. We would like to see them fused a little bit. We're starting to see that with Chat GPT with the Bing search engine, where you can choose that model if you're a subscriber. Uh, so we, we've got a long way to go. I think it's a little bit of a clunky user experience on all of these types of solutions. Maybe Bing Chat from a search perspective has it 
you know, the closest, if they're the closest to nailing it right now. Uh, but I really believe that this is going to be a significant way that everybody's going to change. And frankly, as much as Bing Chat has made a lot of headlines and as much as Chat GPT has made a lot of headlines, it's going to be this Google search gender of experience, which is going to have the biggest user base, the fastest, because everybody already uses Google search and people haven't necessarily haven't necessarily switched over yet. So this behavior change is going to happen first with Google search for the people who haven't already tried those other types of things. It'll have a lot of market share. People get used to it. And then maybe some people will try some of the other solutions. Okay. I'm Brett Kinsella. This is a production of Synthedia and voicebot.ai. Sign up for the Synthedia newsletter. We do generative AI news. We do reviews of what's going on in the news and generative AI and things like Google search generative experience. You can find that at uh, bit.ly forward slash Synthedia. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.